Hey, good morning, friends, and welcome to Olive Online Church. My name is Sean Pillay, and I serve as Minister of Evangelism and Discipleship here at Olive. Wow, what a week it has been. Hurricane Sally really came, brought its power. But let me tell you something, Jesus still deserves all glory. Welcome. We're so excited that you tuned in. And I encourage you now, take up your phones. If you have some signal, text this link to one of your friends or some of your family members. They would love to watch online as well. You can see that the church is filling up. Uh, we have many trucks that are coming in with disaster relief and we are here to serve the community. I want you to be encouraged today and let's go now and take the love of Jesus Christ to our neighbors. Let's serve Jesus together. Pastor is going to be in John chapter 2. I encourage you to grab a copy of God's Word and let's get ready and welcome our pastor, Pastor Ted Trailer. We're so glad that you're joining us today. Good morning. Good to see you today. Glad that uh, you, you are here on this uh, whatever day of the week it is. So uh, glad you've come. Welcome. Hey, I want to remind you of two or three things. And I want to pray, and then we'll turn our eyes to the baptistry where uh, we have uh, some uh, three folks, I believe, this morning being baptized and part of that link to our Hispanic uh, work. And so uh, they'll be uh, baptizing there. Uh, this morning we remind you of two or three things next sunday we're going to do it this week but it's crazy so uh we'll begin deacon nominations next sunday so be thinking about that and we're going to push out most of that online okay so you can do it online during the week there'll be a few paper ballots but it'd be better if we can do it online it'll just help everybody but then you can't get online so that's why we're waiting till next week all right uh then if you've not registered to vote you need to register to vote and there are some voter registration cards out at the welcome desk. They'll give you one and you can fill it out, but you have to be responsible for getting it turned in. We've got so much on our plate, we, we just don't want to uh, add that to it, but we get you the card and you can take care of it uh, if you've uh, not done that. So be mindful uh, of that uh, today. Well, I want to lead us as we uh, pray together just uh, so much uh, on top of us. Uh, didn't have small groups today, but we will next week. Uh, this end of the building had water in it, so uh, they're getting it all cleaned out. We think by Wednesday we're going to be in pretty good shape. Uh, so we'll be back in our uh, connection groups next Sunday, and uh, you can join us uh, whichever hour it is and then be uh, in church. So we look forward uh, to that. Well, I want to ask you just to kneel, if you can. Uh, put on our knees, and let's put the day before the Lord. Look back and thank him for what uh, he's seen us through. Hear the word of the Lord in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 5. It's up on the screen. The Lord is righteous within her. He will do no injustice. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He does not fail. King James says, he faileth not. And this morning he never fails us. And so we want to trust him this day. You join me and let's pray and put the day before the Lord. Father God, we come to your throne of grace. Thank you that you've sustained us as we've walked through this week. And Lord, we pray now that you'll help us as we bless our community, encourage our community. Thank you for Disaster relief workers, many from our own North American Mission Board that have come to our city and our region. Thank you that we can house part of them and be a blessing to them. Help them as they help us. Lord, teach us whatever lesson you've got for us through this hurricane. Lord, I pray that we'd not look down and not look within, but really we'd look up cast our care over on you. We give this worship time to you. We pray your favor to be on our city. Bless our mayor, city council, county commissioners, Chief Leiter, Sheriff Morgan, others that serve. Bless the school superintendents and those helping them make decisions about school next week. We just cast these needs over on you. And thank you that you're in charge and that you fail 
knocked. And we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. As you slide into your seat, lift your eyes to the baptistry, and you'll be blessed. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, all family. We've got several children coming today to show you that they have trusted in Christ as their Savior. So you'd be praying for them as they come. First of all, we have uh, Zachary Kelly coming today. Zachary got saved about a year ago and making his public profession of faith today in Christ. Zachary, have you trusted in Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Amen. Based upon your testimony and the authority given to me by God's Word, I now baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We are buried with them in baptism and raised to walk in newness of life. Amen. <laughs> Pastor, come and help us today baptize. This is uh, our friend uh, Gustavo Mendoza, and uh, he's uh, part of our uh, Hispanic ministry here at Olive, and he's got two precious sisters that are going to come and get baptized today. Amen. morning. Her name is Victoria. She's from Chile. Victoria, has aceptado a Jesús como tu Señor y Salvador de tu corazón. Por tu fe en Jesucristo, yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. She's Victoria's sister, Amanda. Amanda, has aceptado a Jesucristo como Señor y Salvador en tu corazón. Yes. Por tu fe en Jesucristo y la autoridad que me da el Señor, yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Gustavo. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. And I pray, God, that you would just bless us as we uh, make our way through the, the storm and the damages. God, our church, our community is reaching out, Father, for help. I pray, God, that you'll be our rock and our refuge. God, thank you for these three kids today that have come to make their public profession of faith in baptism. We ask you to bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Let's stand and rejoice that Jesus is ours. We belong to him. He is our Savior. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God.
will praise you. We will praise your name for. We will praise you. We will praise you. We will praise you. Your name forever. We will praise you. We will praise you. We will praise your name for. We will praise you. We will praise you. We will praise your name. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We lift up the name of the Lord. His name is great and greatly to be praised. Let's turn our hearts, our minds to Him today. Sing this. I cast my mind to Calvary Where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. By heavy storm, Messiah still and all alone. Oh. Sing it out. And on the third at break of dawn, the Son of Heaven rose again. Come on, church. Oh, trample death. Where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. Oh, praise the 
Amen. Psalm 103 says, Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is above the heavens, His glory above all nations. So lift up their song and praise His name. Come on. Oh, praise the Lord. Sing it loud, church. Come on. John, just a moment, we'll give our morning offering. Brother Jerry Wood, would you come and pray for us uh, today? He'll get you a mic right here. Uh, I had a staffer ask earlier today, uh, said, Pastor, on a day like this, uh, w- will we take an offering? <laughs> I looked at him like, are you sure it's the will of God for you to be on this team? I'm, I'm not <laughs> I said, you, you hadn't known me very long, evidently. People, God's people always want to give. That's part of what we do. So, uh, yeah, we kind of laughed together about that. Boy, the Lord's favored us, blessed us, encouraged us. And so I want to encourage you as you give your tithe and offering uh, unto the Lord. Brother Jerry, this morning as we pray, would you remember and just pray for these electrical people that are on these poles all around us and helping us and restoring electricity? So let's, let's pray for them as well as our police today. Uh, looking out, they're, they're walking. I've tried to reach out to some of our leaders in that regard. So let's pray for uh, these that are of our area and others that have come uh, to help us, the electricians as well as police and, and other first responders. So you pray, give thanks unto the Lord, and remember these today if you would. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you've blessed us in so much in these last four or five days because, Lord, you watched over us. We thank you for your presence in the midst of us in the Olive Baptist Church this morning. Father, we just want to thank you that you laid your hand upon my family and all these other families that we didn't lose any lives. Lord, the police department, the sheriff department, the fire department, and all these trucks, Lord, electricians and down on Woodbine there was five or six or eight up on these poles and up in the buckets and Lord, will you lay your hand upon them, Heavenly Father and be with them, Lord comfort them, comfort their families, they're away looking after us and Lord, we want to bow and thank you that you watched our church and our homes, Lord, it hadn't been easy For days after day, four or five days, I've been working. My family come in and helped me, and I'm sure he did with all of us. Lord, we pray for our world today. Lord Jesus, God loves, so loved this world that he sent our Savior, not just for America, but Lord, we pray that you'd lay your healing hands upon this world today and touch those that's been touched by this virus. And, Lord, we know there's nothing impossible with God. And, Lord, we trust in you and stand on God's word. We pray for a mighty healing. 
because you are a great physician and you are a great healer. We thank you for our pastor, Lord, that's been preaching the Word of God for four or five months here and reaching out to this world that people would get their hearts right with God. And thank you for Brother John leading this choir, Lord. We love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we trust in you. Bless this offering, Lord, that we give. May we never stop giving. And we can't outgive God. But let us do what we're supposed to do. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen.
Thank you, team. Take your Bible this morning and go to the Gospel of John, chapter 2, and we'll begin reading there in verse number 1. John 2 and verse number 1. Well, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, this crowd's a little smaller than the first crowd. We had a larger crowd in the first service, but I don't know, John, I, looked, I think it's a better looking crowd than we had in the first service. So, uh, I'm glad you're here today. Thank you for coming. Uh, boy, it's been uh, some kind of period in, in our lives, but I'm glad that you are here on this Lord's Day. Uh, we're in John's Gospel, chapter 2, a message entitled, Jesus Deserves the Glory. And I'm going to need a little help. Uh, I've been up on the mountain preaching uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. They like to preach me to death up there, all right? Man, they shout and holler and uh, Let's say amen. So I, I need a little help today, okay? Uh, I need to feel like I'm at home right here. So uh, uh, you, you help me today as we dig in to God's Word for just a few minutes together. John's Gospel, chapter 2. Now I'll begin reading in verse number 1. This is the first of seven miracles uh, mentioned in the book of John. Uh, some call them signs, miracles. The word is semion. In the Greek New Testament, it, it is a semion. It is that that reflects manifested glory unto God. It is something Jesus did that reflected the glory manifest and due to his name. The first one is turning water to wine. It's what we're going to look at today. The last one is raising Lazarus from the dead, and there are five in between, as you read in the Gospel of John. But we see this first one in John 2, beginning in verse 1 and reading through verse 11. You follow along as I read, because this now is the word of our God. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does that have to do with us? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were six stone water pots set there for Jewish purification, for the custom of purification, containing 20 to 30 gallons each. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw out now and uh, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it to him. And when the head waiter tasted the water which had become wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man serves the good wine first, and when the people have drunk freely, then he serves the poorer wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of his signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, and manifested his glory. There's our phrase. Manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Jesus makes manifest of glory that comes only due to his name. And he begins that here with this. And there are seven miracles recorded in John where he manifested his glory. He's in Cana of Galilee on a Wednesday. It's the third day of the week. Virgin brides were married on Wednesday in Jewish custom. On this third day, this bride, being Jewish and a virgin, had a wedding. And Jesus and his disciples have been invited. And the, wa the wine ran out. There was a difficulty. Mary is there, and she is, uh, well, she's sticking her nose in the business of the wedding. Uh, and the wine runs out, and she goes to her son to, and says, Jesus, 
They're out of wine. And he says, Mother, what does that have to do with us? My time's not yet come. What, what do we do here? Now, he was not scolding her. That word woman there is as sweet a word for your mother as you'll find anywhere. He's, he's embracing. He's just saying, this is not our wedding. Now, tradition says that it was Mary's sister that was getting married. Therefore, she had kind of gotten into the wedding. Other traditions write that it was John, the writer of the gospel, that it, he was the one getting married, and he was a follower of Jesus, and therefore Mary said, this is one of my son's men, and whatever has happened, she puts herself into this situation where the wine has run out. And Jesus is going to perform a miracle, and it's going to be for his manifestation of glory. When you turn back a page or two to John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible says the Word became flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld His glory. Glory as the only begotten of the Father, who is full of grace and truth. Where Jesus walked, glory was manifested. Glory unto God and unto the very Son of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether you eat or whether you drink, do everything that you do to the glory of God. If you're baptized like these young people today, do it to the glory of God. If you're going to preach, do it to the glory of God. If you're going to help your neighbor this week, do it to the glory. Don't do it for your own sake. Do it for the glory of God himself. Jesus, not you. Jesus, not me, Jesus, not Olive, Jesus deserves the glory. We should glorify His name. Well, how does this happen? When does Jesus move in to bring this kind of glory? Well, let me lay three things on, on your heart today, three simple thoughts that I want you to see with me. Then I'm going to give a gospel invitation, and if you're here without Christ, I hope you'll go to one of our next step tables out there in the foyer. Join this church. Come give your heart and life to Christ. Come for baptism. Come to be saved today. Come see me at this table right down here. Had two families come and join uh, this morning down here and some others out in the foyer uh, this morning. In, on a down day with a low crowd. People still need the Lord and will love the church. And you'll come. Or maybe you say, I want to try to be a help to neighbors. You go by and we'll put your name on the list. We need you. We'll call you. You're free. you got power at your house. I've been kidding everybody. Everybody. They've been putting on Facebook, glory, we got power. I've been remarking to everybody, if you get power before Sunday, you give a double tithe. <laughs> and then after a while, they quit putting that on there. But I, uh, So you, you've been blessed and you can help, then uh, you be a part uh, of doing that at the end of this service. How do we give glory unto Christ that we learn from this text? Well, three things. Number one, Jesus works in periods of of frustration. When we are at our lowest, He is at His highest. When we are at our worst, He is at His best. When you find yourself in a period of frustration, and here's Mary, she's frustrated. There's no wine at the wedding. It's a period of embarrassment. It's in difficulty. She is not in control. Now, things like that don't bother me, but I know for some of you, not being in control is a real difficulty for you, all right? Well, that's where Mary is. There's frustration. It's tough. It's, it's hard. Boy, we've been walking through it. If Jesus really does manifest himself in periods of frustration, we ought to be seeing him on every corner, amen? <laughs> Boy, we've walked through all these months of covid and then Sally comes to town. Well, that's not new to us. We have hurricanes. We have storms. And I've wondered what, what heightened. I, I've seen shorter fuses than ever. I, even among the staff here, it's been a little more difficult. Why? I'm going to tell you why the difficulty, COVID in a storm, here was the heightened frustration. The Weather Channel lied to us. (laughs) 
They said it was going over yonder. And it came over here. You didn't get gas. You didn't go get all the bread out of the stores. You didn't think you was going to need it. Then Sally came trotting in the town. Well, I wasn't ready. I didn't have my generator. I didn't have it. And I've already been through COVID. And now I got all this rain. And now I, I can't run my car. I can't. And, and all of a sudden, the frustration just went up and up and up and up. And up. Oh, what a time for Jesus to show out. Amen. When we come to this period of frustration, He is able. Amen. He is faithful. I'm telling you, He shows up, shows out, manifests glory in the time of frustration. I know it's hard. Friend, this is a difficult period. If, if COVID wasn't enough and the storm and not knowing, you, you, you put all that together, then you've just got other things that, that come your way. Uh, I wouldn't have gone out of town if I'd have known. I preached Tuesday night, and I saw where the rain was going to be going up through Alabama, and I saw it was coming over there. You know, it was coming through Mississippi, and then it was going to rain in Alabama. So I decided to leave late, 4 o'clock Monday night instead of Tuesday morning. I'll get out in front of the rain, and then it'll be all fine. I'll get back on Tuesday. Well, I went on Monday. I couldn't come back Tuesday. I couldn't come back Wednesday. I, 29 was underwater, and I'm sitting up there in Alabama frustrated, waiting. My wife's down here. She was supposed to go with me, but decided since I was leaving early, she'd just stay here. And boy, my frustration went up. So my phone's over there. It doesn't work, but it's over there. <laughs> my wife melted it calling me on uh, Tuesday. It, it's just all good together. Man, I'm up there, and I can't get down here, and I'm trying to help her, and I don't know how, and you don't call people because everybody's in the same boat and it's, it's hard. And You know, after a while, you just have to sink so low that you pray. Amen. That's how God does it. He breaks us to the place that we're, we're so low, we begin to look up and cry and say, Oh God, have mercy. And he manifests his glory in periods of frustration. So, so don't, don't look down. Don't look in the mirror. Look up, look up, look up. Look for the glory one. Look for the glory giver. Look for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's on your side. He's going to help you and strengthen you and walk through the way with you. Jesus works in periods of frustration. Secondly, Jesus works in people of cooperation. Now, now notice that in this miracle setting, Mary asked Jesus, and he says, well, what's that have to do with us? And she turns on her heels and looks at the servants, and she gives one of the greatest life verses in all the world. If your daughter or your son ever gets married, you ought to write this verse and give it to them in a card. Whatever Jesus says to you, do it. Whatever Jesus says to you, do it. Don't do what your mother-in-law says. Do what Jesus said. Don't do what the pastor said. Do what Jesus says to you. Don't even do what you tell yourself to do. Do what Jesus says. Said. Mary turns and looks at the servant and says, whatever he, this guy right over here, my son, whatever he says, do it. And Jesus immediately looks at them and sees six stone water pots. They're there for Jewish purification. When you'd come into a Jewish home like this for a wedding, you, you would cleanse yourself is this purification process. And there were six stone water pots, three over here, three over here. And they held 20 to 30 gallons. These are not little buckets. They're 20 to 30 gallons a piece that are in. So if there's 30 gallons in there, 30 times 6 is. Are you all with me? Is there no mathematician in the house? 
It's not a trick question. 180, thank you very much. It's, it, it's, it's 180, there's 180 gallons of water uh, that's right here. And Jesus says, fill them to the brim. And so they go and they fill 180 gallons uh, and they fill them up to the brim. Then he looks at another group and he says, now go and draw out. And they put the bucket down into that and, and they draw it out. He said, after you draw it out, and that word draw them is to reach deep. And, and you draw out, now take it to the head waiter. And he gave it to him and the head waiter drank it. And he said, man. They kept the best wine for the end. Usually they use the best first. And, but he said, where did this come from? He didn't know what happened. But the servants who had drawn knew where it had come from. There's Mary. There's Jesus. There's servants. There's a head waiter. There's filling. There's drawing. There's ser- Listen to me. If you want to see Jesus go to work in this church, learn to cooperate one with another. Quit riding on your own horse, going your own way, doing your own thing every time. Begin to look out for others and work with others and cooperate together. There are no small people. There are no small tasks. It takes us all. It takes cooperation. It takes this class, this class. It takes this leader, that leader. It takes this servant, that servant. It takes all of us together to get the job done. That's where Jesus manifests his glory is in people who learn to cooperate one with another. You'll meet more of your neighbors during this season than you've ever met before. I met one, I've been living where I am 12 years now. I met one of my neighbors yesterday. I didn't, number one, I never met him. I didn't know he existed. He lived in a house out behind one of my neighbors. I didn't even know there's a house back there. He just showed up in my yard yesterday. He come after me. I didn't go after him. I didn't. I couldn't go get him. I didn't even know he was there. He comes walking up in the yard. He said, well, we heard you was gone. And uh, we thought about coming to see if your wife was okay, but it was pretty bad. And he said, now that you're here, I guess things will be all right. He said, we weren't really concerned about you so much as we were her anyway, but... Uh, I said, well, thank you very much. And we, we laughed together. About, we had the first conversation we had in 12 years because I didn't even know we existed. Let me tell you, if you'll begin to work with your neighbors during this and cooperate, because there's some of them you don't even like. I said, there's some of them you don't even like. Now, don't lie to me. They've kicked your dog and run up in your yard. Some of them are taking stuff out of their yard and they're putting it on your side of the road. <laughs> yeah. They don't want that mess over on their side. They want it on your side of the road. This is the time to say, that's all right. County going to come get it after a while. Sometime in 2022, 23, they'll come get that stuff. <laughs> all right? It, it, it'll get gone. Don't, don't worry about it. This is no time to say, well, I want it my way. No, 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 no. This is the time for the manifestation of Jesus. It's time to get over yourself and begin to work with others so that Jesus can show himself strong on your behalf. Amen. It's not about your glory. It's about his. So number one, he works in periods of frustration. He works in people of cooperation. But now number three, number three, don't miss this. Jesus works in powerful manifestations. Power. The power of God. There's some things only Jesus. Let me give you four of these right quick. Number one, Jesus complete what man, completes what man lacks. There's some things you can't do, he can do. Uh, the perfect number is seven, but how many stone water parts are there? Six. There's six. That's the number of man. That's the number of incompletion. Seven is completion. These are Jewish stone water pots. They speak uh, of the Jewish promises. That, that's the picture that's here. Judaism is one pot short. That's all pointing to the Messiah. Let me tell you, the Messiah has come. His name is Jesus Christ. He fulfills every prophecy of the Old Testament. And those six stone water pots are just one container short. Jewish religion leaves a man short, but completes what man lacks. Some of you have been so good, you, you think if I were to die, if there is a heaven, I'll go to that heaven because... No, 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 friend. Jesus does for you what you lack. Amen. 
you, you can't do it yourself. No man's good enough. You see, he doesn't ask you to win 51-49. He not ask you to do more. You've you got to be 100% pure. That's the only way. you got to have a righteousness that's not your own. Jesus Christ imputes his righteousness to your account. And that's how you're accounted as righteous. It's how you come to be saved. What, what man lacks, Jesus completes. Number two, Jesus never runs out of grace. There's 20 to 30 gallons of water in these pots. As I had you add up, it took you a little while. You look better than that other crowd, but they answered quicker than you did. Uh, 180 gallons. That's a lot of wine. Listen to me. Jesus never runs out of grace. He is super abundant in grace. No matter how far you have fallen, His grace reaches to you. Our sweet ladies over in the Karis house, most of them work out great, they, but some of them that leave a stumble, they fall back in an old way. And sometimes they'll come home, but many times they won't because they're embarrassed. But those that'll come back, they, they kind of come dragging with their head down. Say, could, could anybody ever forgive? Oh, yeah, we could forgive you again. Amen. Why? Because Jesus never runs out of grace. No matter where you are, he reaches to the lowest low. He reaches to the deepest valley. That's our Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you that are so far from God, you've never believed. Some of you say he doesn't even exist. Let me tell you, he loves you, and he's reaching toward you, and he's going to manifest himself to you. And you need to turn and believe on his name. He never, ever runs out of grace. Number three, let me tell you, Jesus can change anybody, and he can change anything. If he can change water into wine, he can make a saint out of any sinner. I was up on the mountain preaching this week, as I told you, preaching in an old arbor that they built. The sides come up on it. Man, it was cool on the mountain, that night air blowing through there. Man, it was beautiful. No storm. Just very nice. And I look back here to my left, and there said Eddie Kirby. He was a junior when I was a senior. He was a fullback on our high school football team. Oh, Eddie was lost. He didn't know Jesus. Hard. Uh, we play on Friday night, and you didn't want to be around him on Saturday night. Uh, he ran in places you didn't want to run. Hmm. But a few years ago, Jesus reached and saved Wade Kirby. He was sitting back there listening to me preach. He hugged my neck, and I walked in. He said, Ted, good to see you. Amen. Good to see you. My given name is Teddy, T-E-D-D-Y. That's what my birth certificate says. And let me tell you, they wore me out about that Teddy hurricane while I was up there. I had one of my classmates say to me, I guarantee you if that one comes through here, it'll blow down the Smoky Mountains if it comes. I... Eddie looked at me and he said, Teddy, I'm so glad you love me. And I said, well, Eddie, it was good I loved you, but I'm telling you, the greatest love yet. He said, oh, I know, preacher. He said, Jesus loved me. And he's changed my life. He saved my soul. Let me tell you, if, if God can save Eddie Kirby, he can save anybody in this room. Yes, he, he can change anybody. He can change anything. He can change any church. He can change any life. That's the power of the Christ. If he can change water into wine. Amen. And as I had that old boy singing that country song, and Robert Lloyd did it for us here not long ago, he can also change wine into water. Amen. Makes an old boy becomes a drunk. He can change his life back to where he need be. Jesus completes what man lacks. He never runs out of grace. He can change anything and anyone. And number four, Jesus is the great joy giver. My lost friends want to argue with me about this particular semeon, this miracle. They say, well, preacher, is it Jesus turned water into wine? We ought to all be drinking alcohol. Well, number one, what is this wine? It's three parts water, two parts wine. Uh, it's a good wine. It's the best. I believe it's the same wine we're going to drink in Revelation 19.9 at the marriage supper of the Lamb. 
Now, do you really believe that Jesus is going to miraculously cause a product to exist that would cause you to forget where you've been? No. This product, this liquid, sweet to the taste, joy to the soul, but I'm here to tell you never intoxicating to the mind. That's not the business Jesus is in. You mean to tell me he's going to cause a guy to get drunk and run off the road? No. I don't know all what that means, but I'm here to tell you it is the sweetest marriage supper of the lamb liquid you will ever take. I can't wait to get there. Amen. Marriage supper, I don't know what we're going to eat, but I believe we're going to drink this. And great joy. Joy, joy, joy down in my soul. That's what the Lord will do in your life and in mine. We do a lot of work, of course, in Romania. I want you to look in the last verse we read, verse 11. You got your Bible there? John 2, look, look at it. Verse number 11. This beginning of Simeon, of his signs, of his miracles... Jesus did in Cain of Galilee and manifested his glory. There it is. There's the manifestation of glory. And his disciples believed in him. They followed him. They believed in him. Friend, if you've never believed on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you should believe today. You, you say, Pastor, I just don't even know if I, I even believe there's a God. I, I, I just don't know. If you, let me tell you, you will believe one day. One of the greatest minds that America has ever known, though I disagreed with many of the things she thought was Supreme Court Justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, died this week. That Supreme Court Justice will stand before the King of Kings, the Judge of the World. Like you will stand there and I will say, so, well, I don't even believe there is one. That's fine. You don't have to believe, but you will one day. You'll hear my voice telling it to you. He's King of kings, of Lord of lords, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. His disciples believed. You need to believe today. And after you become a disciple, you need to believe. For by faith are you saved, but also it's faith that brings pleasure unto the Father when you believe. I was in Romania. Second time I'd been there was with Dr. Paul Negrutz. And I asked this question. I said, Dr. Paul, I said, what's the difference in American Christianity and Eastern European Christianity? He said, you really don't want to know. I said, well, I think I do. He said, well, okay, I'll let you know. He said, you in American church have substituted a word with another word and it's messed up the church. I said, well, what is it? He said, you really don't want to know. I said, yeah, I think I really do. He said, okay, you ask. He said, you, you have substituted the word commitment You've made commitment your key word in the vocabulary. I said, well, okay. I said, what, what word have we taken out? He said, I don't think you really want to know. I said, yes, sir, I do. I, I want you to tell me what you think about this. He said, well, preacher, American Christians have put commitment in the place of surrender. I said, well, is commitment a bad word? He said, oh, no, no, commitment's not a bad word. It's just a good word. It's not the best word. I said, well, tell me more. He said, commitment, and he said, you hear this all the time in the American church, be committed, get committed, be committed to the class, be committed to the church. He said, commitment is giving your life, but when it gets difficult, you can take it back. 
He said, in surrender, you give your life, and then your life evaporates, and you are one in Jesus, one and done. It's over. It is Christ and Christ alone, whether you live or die. He said, that's surrender, and you don't back out. You're dead to self and alive to Christ and Christ alone. But when it's commitment, you go along as long as you can get along and as long as it's kind of easy to do, fine. But when it gets hot in the kitchen, you start backing up. And I said, I know, Brother Paul, we sing that song in our church all the time. I committed all. No, no. I... Surrender. We sing it. I'm just not sure we live it. I surrender all. So I was up home Tuesday. I preached, and in Wednesday, I preached on Wednesday morning. I couldn't come home because 29 was underwater in a couple of places. So I took a little trip. I wasn't going to do it. But my buddy Rex took me and we drove to the old home place. (laughs) Drove by and it really looks good. Brad, they built a new shed and they got a new bass boat under it out back. I thought of you when I went by there. Grass was cut all the way to the neighbors. I thought daddy's smiling in heaven. He never could get the neighbors to cut the grass. He's got it cut. I paused and looked at the old house. Then we drove back through the little town, and I stopped, and I said, Rex, pull in right here. And I got out, and I walked down. I'd never done it. I'd seen it for years and years. I said, I want to stop. And I walked into the yard. It's a vacant lot. There's three stone steps sitting out there in the middle of the yard. Old, old stone steps. And there's a sidewalk. It's where the old Pisgah Baptist Church used to be. Those stone steps is what I walked up to go into church where I got saved, where I was baptized. I'd never been back there, and I made two or three pictures, had Brad make them, uh, Rex make them for me. And I just paused there, and I said, Lord... I got saved right here. I was just a 10-year-old boy across the street in the new church is where I surrendered. Amen. I said, Lord, I go anywhere, do, up any, do anything, give up anybody, give up anything, Lord, be in center of your will, Lord. I surrender all. The Lord. If you're watching today, if you've got enough bandwidth to watch us, If you're able to get online today, and if you've never given your life to Christ, I pray you will. I pray you'll surrender all. If you do that, I I hope you'll send me a text, 94,000. Just send that word to me. You'll see it right there on the screen. Surrender. Just, Just put that word. Say, I surrender all unto the Lord. Send that word to us. We'll get back in touch with you. And if you're in this room today and you've never said yes to Jesus... Go to one of those tables out there. Come to the table right here. If you want to join this church, want to move your membership and be a part, come to this table. Go to that table out there. We'll be glad to receive you. Just be saved, baptized, come be a part. We had a leader in this community come join our church this morning. I was just thrilled when that man and his wife came and said, we, we're ready to. They didn't say we want to join. They said, we've come to serve. We're ready to sign up to serve. I said, amen. And we signed them up. Sir, maybe you're ready to come be a part of the family today. And his disciples believed. I trust you're believing him today. In a moment, I'm going to pray, and John's going to sing, and we're going to go from here. Man, I, I know you're tired. Man, I'm tired. I'm weary. I went to bed at 9 o'clock last night. I hadn't been to bed at 9 o'clock since I was 3 years old. I mean, I was tired. I'm weary, just like you. Not just physically, but mentally and emotionally and every other way. You, you just, it wears on you. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is take a nap. 
it's time to rest sometimes. And then get up and go. And some of you need to come tell us you're, you're ready to help today. Thank God for these out here in the parking lot going to help us get it done. When we sing this song, when I pray, I want you just to tell the Lord you surrender to him. Give your life to him. Jesus died for you. And he says, whosoever, let him come unto me. And then you come. His mercy. Oh, my. His burden's light. Yoke is easy. Come to him. And he will give you strength for the journey. I was preaching just while I pray. I was preaching this morning right up here. There were seven girls sitting right up here. Seven girls. They, they were all high school girls. Long blonde hair. Everyone of them beautiful. I told them after service, I said, I had to preach over this way to keep from looking at y'all. You're just gorgeous sitting up here. They giggled, and their mom and daddy is with them, and some other adults. I tried to challenge those girls to say, give your life to Christ. I mean, live for him. God's blessed you a thousand ways. Now live for it. Some of them do. I'm praying they all do. I'm praying you do. That you give your life unto Christ this day. I'm going to pray. After I pray, we'll sing. And as we're singing, we'll stand dismissed to come make our commitment here or out there. And then as we leave this place, we'll go and we'll get a little nourishment. and We'll rest this afternoon. And then we'll pick up some more stuff. Amen? Amen. Yeah. We'll gather it up and we'll go help our neighbors and share the gospel as we go. Father, thank you that you blistered the water with your glory and made it wine. Give us joy today in the midst of frustration. Thank you that you're the great joy giver, that you'll see us through every storm that comes our way. We bless you, we love you, and we thank you today. Lord, I thank you that 16 years ago when Ivan came, Lord, you birthed the ministry village at Olive. You, you birthed all kind of ministry opportunities out of that hurricane. And Lord, I believe you're going to do it again through this storm. Good things are going to come. Ministry avenues we've never even imagined are going to come our way. Help us have eyes to see and ears to hear and a will to obey. Lord, I say to you again, afresh and anew, I surrender all unto you. Bless our dear church. And for those that are at home struggling, I pray for encouragement to be on them. In Jesus' blessed name, amen and amen. Church, I love you. Thank God for you. Thank you for coming, being here. If you're our guest today, thank you for coming and being in this place. As we stand together, you'll be dismissed. They're waiting for you in the foyer. I'm waiting for you here. I'll see you next time. We'll have small groups next Sunday beginning 8 o'clock, and I'll see you right then. God bless you. Jesus is for you. Hey, friends, I'm so glad that you're watching online today. What a powerful word that we heard from Dr. Ted Trailer today. I thank God that we have an opportunity to open God's Word and also have this opportunity to have interaction via online. Jesus is for you. Like Mary, Mary chose to be close to Jesus whenever she had the opportunity. Today, Jesus chooses to be close to you. And this is the gospel, the good news. And what is the good news? That you don't have to pay for your sins anymore. I don't have to pay for my sins anymore. Jesus paid it all. The Bible teaches us in Romans 5, 8, that just the right time, while you and I were still powerless, Christ died for us. And there's more. God the Father loves you and I just as much as He loves Jesus, His own Son. You are loved. And I know we're living in times of turmoil and doubt and fear and depression. Turn to Jesus. He wants to have a relationship with you. Won't you please text this word, SAVIOR, to 94000. I or one of our team members here at Olive Baptist Church will love to reach out to you and help you take your next steps towards Jesus. Text the word SAVIOR to 94000. I'm so glad we can have this conversation. Just pause for a minute and think how much Jesus means to you 
and how much it is for you. Just another reminder that Jesus is for you and he loves you just where you are and wants to help you to journey in your faith. Jesus loves you.